Welcome to the separated flow session of APS DFD Communications. Coming to you from Chicago, Illinois this year. I will be the chair of this session and my name is Cloud. Today we are talking about predicting dynamic stall and why it matters. My guest is Fatma Ayancık and she is a postdoctoral researcher in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at EPFL. In this talk, we will hear more from her about her project. Okay Fatma. First, could you tell me what's dynamic stall and why predicting it is important? Hi Cloud, thank you for inviting me. Well, dynamic stall is an unsteady flow behavior experienced by a ring due to the rapid angle of attack change beyond the static stall angle. But this produces an increase in torsional loads on the wings. For wings operating at such high angles of attack, such as helicopter rotor blades or wind turbine blades, These unsteady loads reduce aerodynamic efficiency, limit operational boundaries, and decrease structural stability. For that reason, predicting dynamic stall is the key to eliminate or control dynamic stall for improved and safe designs. Okay, now we know about the dynamic stall. Can you tell us a little bit more on your project and how it is related to predicting the dynamic stall? I'm working on theoretical modeling of dynamic stall hysteresis. I recently developed a dynamic stall model that predicts the stall hysteresis with reduced empiricism. How do you exactly model the dynamic stall? Well, first I need to explain to you different stages of dynamic stall. It has six important stages. First, attach flow, which is the part in lift coefficient versus angle of attack graph, as you can see in here, which is the part up to the stall, uh, static stall angle. The second stage is the appearance and spreading of flow reversal on the airflow suction side, where we call it as the stall development. The third stage is where a large scale dynamic stall vortex forms, leading to stall delay. Fourth stage shows the separation of the first dynamic stall vortex, indicating stall onset. Then a massive flow separation comes in the full stall stage, and finally flow attachment happens when wings turn back to the lower angles. For the modeling part, I'm using Oman Carbon model. It's a semi-empirical model, and it uses a single internal state variable X to represent the degree of flow attachment during the different stages of dynamic stall. As you can see in here, X1, X equal to 1 represents the fully attached flow, and 0 corresponds to the fully separated stage. The state equation for X is determined by solving a first-order differential equation. In here, tau1 and tau2 are the two empirical time constants that correspond to the flow relaxation time for transition between separated and attached states, and then the time lag associated with the, di di uh, with the dynamic stall vortex formation that we call as the stall delay. By using x, we can then calculate the coefficient of lift by using Kirchhoff's law as indicated in this slide, and we can represent uh, the predicted dynamic stall pretty well. So you are saying that Goma Carbon model is actually doing a good job in modeling the dynamic stall? Yeah. Then what was the problem with it? Ah, yes, it predicts very well, but the constants in the model are empirical. and They are found generally by fitting, uh, these, fitting them to the experimental or numerical data for a specific airflow geometry and kept constant for various radius frequencies. Then what do you put more into Goman Carbon model? We introduce physical time constants to re replace the empirical ones in the model. Okay, you need to tell me more about this. How do you do that? Uh, in the model, we start with the tau2 term, which is located in the right-hand side of the equation. This term models the separation delay caused by the dynamic motion of the airfoil. Basically, tau2 plays a role as an offset parameter in between static stall angle and dynamic stall angle. We know how to obtain the separation delay for ramp-up motion thanks to Ericsson and Redding. But what we do is that we take this equation and write it for general oscillatory motions. And when we do that, we can write the, write the rate in between static stall time, which is in here TSS, and dynamic stall onset time, which is in here TDS, and obtain the separation delay as a function of static stall pitch rate and a constant time scale, delta TC. The good part about this time scale is that it does not change for different types of airfoils or various motion types. 
and also valid for a range of reduced frequencies like as the other models. Then we continue with tau 1 parameter. It represents the relaxation time in between separated and reattachment flow states and starting point corresponds to the time right after dynamic stall happens. After the first dynamic stall vortex sheds, the vortex shedding creates load fluctuations until the reattachment starts. This creates jitter in the flow where the lift peak sees variation in one case for different cycles. If you plot dynamic stall vortex shedding lift peaks, we will see that these lift peaks decay after stall onset. When we plot those peaks for different pitching motion, we see a decaying trend more clearly which is also independent of motion and steadiness. If we represent the decay with a curve, we can end up with exponential decay where tau 1 is the half-time constant, meaning that for the relaxation part, CL can be represented by exponential decay with a constant relaxation term. In our case, this is tau 1. That sounds great. By the way, how do you get your experimental data? So we use the closed circuit low speed wind tunnel with an open test section. So you can see the Reynolds number and then the Mach number stated in here. Uh, we are using an on air profile airfoil. We have a, a pitching wing, uh, pitching about the, uh, the quarter cortexes by using a sinusoidal motion. We have time resolved PIV and then the acid depression motions that are taken by at the mid span of the airfoil. Wow, that's nice and neat. How well does your model predict the experiments? So this is the exciting part. If we use this new constants in the goman krabro model, we can see that the modified goman krabro predicts the dynamic stall as good as the original model with physical time scales instead of the empirical ones. And also this, we can use this model right now without changing these time scales for different types of airfoils. Well done, and thank you very much Fatma for this nice and informative chat. I hope our listeners enjoyed listening to you as much as I did. Wish you all a great day and enjoy the rest of the APS conference. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me and for the nice chat. Have a nice day.